Hey everybody! So season 3 has finally arrived, and some of you have probably been wondering where exactly I've been. Originally, I was planning on making a video a day or two after the update dropped to share my first opinions. But then I realized it might be a better idea to play around with the update a bit more so that I can have a bit of a better opinion on things. So I've spent the last week or so gathering my thoughts, and I'm ready to talk about what I think about the update and where I think the game might go forward from here. But before we get into that, make sure you subscribe to be invited to my birthday party. And maybe while you're doing that, go ahead and leave a comment as well. Let me know if you agree or disagree with me. I'd love to hear what you have to say either way. Getting right into my thoughts, I want to start off with a bit more of a general overview of the update. All things considered, this update was pretty small. We got the grenades, a couple new cave formations, a few balance tweaks, and the new season event stuff. Now, having a smaller update is completely fine by me. I actually talked about something like this in a video I called a potential problem for DRG. To summarize what I said in that video, the previous two seasons added a lot of new content. New weapons, which was a really big thing considering how much work has to go into making the weapons. Implementing the season system, a new mission type, tons and tons of new enemies. The first two seasons had a lot going on, and I wanted to bring up how that's not exactly sustainable forever. I'm really happy that Season 3 is a little bit smaller than the previous two, but I predicted that some people might be disappointed, and I have seen a little bit of that. Now, I'd like to say real quick that I think the developers put a ton of work into this new season, but with how long it's been since the last one, I can understand why some people might be disappointed in the content that we got. I don't think it's very fair of them, but I do completely understand. Now the reason why I'm talking about this is I just wanted to use this as an opportunity to essentially repeat what I said in my potential problems video and say that we cannot always expect something as big as getting four new weapons. Believe me, I want new content as much as the next dwarf, but the developers shifted to the season format so that they could spend more time on each update and have things be a little easier for them going forward. Anyways, moving on from that, let's talk about some of the new season content. So far, I've really been enjoying fighting back against the rock pox. The infected glyphids, while being pretty simple, offer a good mix-up to swarms, and I kinda wish we actually saw them more often, but as of right now, they only appear during the lithophage warning. The meteor event is also tons of fun. It's really cool how there's no forewarning and it just kinda happens out of the blue. Of course, you still have to opt into activating it, but it's really nice to not have it sitting there in the cave and to just sort of fall on top of you. As fun as these new events are, I think this also actually ties into the biggest problem I have with the update. There are two new assignments where you have to do six lithophage missions each, and on top of this, the meteor missions only give you script for every six plague hearts you collect from them, meaning you have to do at least two to get one script, unlike the data cells in season one and two, which gave you one script for one data cell. As you might be starting to pick up on, this means that there is a lot of grinding for season three. Season three is the grindiest season by far, and it's a little bit frustrating. It's also a little bit concerning. I really hope that this is not the direction they decide to go in from here. If they do, then I think the game's quality is ultimately going to suffer from this, so I thought it was kind of important to sort of talk about this right now. Of course, Season 1 and 2 did have some grinding to them. That's kind of inevitable when it comes to a Season Pass format. But on top of that, now there's only one event that can reliably earn you script. The Prospector Drone and Data Deposit from Season 1 both could give you a data cell which could be directly exchanged for script. And Season 2 added the Rival Communications Router. This means that we went from having three events that could give us script to just one. As fun as the Meteor events might be, they're probably going to get old fast. There isn't much the team can do now, so hopefully they take steps to learn from this situation and improve going forward. Anyways, now that I've gotten my complaining out of the way, let's talk about the new grenades. The Voltaic Stun Sweeper is Scout's new grenade, and it is a boomerang that is very cool. I could stop there, but I guess I'll go into a little bit more detail. I've noticed a lot of people who seem to think it's a pretty weak grenade, and I'm honestly kind of surprised by that. Sure, it can only stun up to 9 bugs at a time, but what I think is really cool about it is A, how long it stuns bugs for, and B, the fact that it applies the electrocution status effect to enemies. People seem to gloss right over the fact that electrocution does damage over time, meaning it's not only stunning enemies, but it's also weakening them as well. 
Of course it's great if you're playing Scout, but I found it really useful if I had a Scout on my team that was running the Stun Sweeper. It's a very useful tool for helping out yourself and your teammates, and I think people might be underestimating it. Next up is the Spring Loaded Ripper, and this one is very interesting, but also very difficult to fully understand. In order to be really effective with this thing, you have to have a good understanding of how it interacts with terrain and this grenade might single-handedly be the reason I had to delay this video for as long as I did. I wanted to have at least a basic understanding of how it worked before I gave my thoughts on it. To sum up said thoughts, I think that this weapon really heavily leans into the driller's ability to modify the terrain. I can think of some potential ways to use your drills so that the ripper becomes much more effective. Unfortunately, this grenade tends to be much more situational than any of the others, meaning it's very difficult to use as effectively as possible. It's hard for me to say whether I like or dislike it even now, and I think that the community as a whole is going to need some more practice with this thing before we come to a definitive conclusion. Then we've got the Shredder Swarm. This is a pretty simple grenade, but it's loads of fun. Basically, you throw out a grenade and summon a swarm of Shredder drones from the previous seasons. Honestly, there's not too much for me to say here. It's reliable, consistent damage that follows enemies around to wherever they might be. It may not have the same damage output or be quite as flashy as something like the Plasma Bursters, but it's effective and it gets the job done. And finally, we have the Tactical Lead Burster. When I first started to play around with this, I thought it was actually kind of weak. I'm glad I took some more time to practice because I've come to realize that it's pretty darn useful. It's similar to the Spring Loaded Ripper in that it's a bit more situational than some of the other grenades you might find, but once you find out what's the best way to properly place it during a swarm, it is a very powerful tool. I think the biggest challenge you'll face when using this grenade is the friendly fire damage. It might not do as much damage as the Spring Loaded Ripper, but unlike the Ripper, it's actually pretty hard to avoid taking damage from this thing. Well, with all that said, that's my thoughts on Season 3. I know this was a little bit short, and I certainly do have my thoughts and opinions on other things in the update, but I felt like these were the main highlights of the update that I wanted to address. If you want to know my thoughts on any of the other changes, go ahead and leave a comment. We can discuss it down there. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.